great, great pleasure for all of us to have Kaya Sariapa here and to have her have created a work um, inspired by this very special Houston landmark. Um, Kaya, when I wrote to you when you first heard about this desire for us to commission you, you already knew about Rockwell Chapel, yes? Yes, of course, because this is a very famous place and I, I knew. But to be honest, the first time I heard the name Roto Chapel was when I heard the piece by, by Morton Feldman. And I thought, well, what a beautiful title. And uh, I didn't know that it was dead. <laughs> and, uh, because I, I knew already then Roto's work, and I liked a lot uh, his work. So I thought uh, it was like a celebration of well, since we just have a few minutes, I thought we could talk a little bit about the pieces that we're going to hear tonight. Um, first, let's talk a little bit more about song row, because it was really wonderful. Kaya came down here with Camilla Hoyt and the flutist um, just about a year ago, and already you had a sense of the instrumental colors, but you spent a day in this space with, with Camilla, and, and what did that give you in, in terms of shaping the piece? Well, we came here with the uh, base group of, of Camilo because this instrument somehow really became the center color of, of, of the piece and for me it corresponds to Rocco's work here. And uh, I have written some phrases and we were able to play them and I, I heard this acoustic. This, is, this place has very special acoustic like that. And, uh, that really then inspired the whole way I wrote for the ensemble. Yeah, it's a remarkable ensemble of color, remarkable colors. And you treat the, the voice in a special way as well. <coughs> it's not so much a, a setting of a singer. The singer is very much part of the ensemble. Well, as, as every other musician would, He's very, he has very large palette uh, of sounds and, and singing is one of them. And uh, as we all can use our voices very differently, I am asking him to do it also. Well, and, and Kaya Sariyama is one of my musicians for also asking musicians to use their instruments very differently. I mean, you're all in for a treat because, you know, we were saying in rehearsals, I think, um, I was sitting in a rehearsal, even though there's no piano in this piece, and um, that we all play a lot of new music, and we often feel like we're playing variations of certain sounds that are already out there. But Kaya is always inventing something new and asking musicians to do something new. And it's because she works very deeply from a sound that she hears within her. And I, I want to show you, I saw a, a French television interview um, with you. And there was a wonderful thing because the interviewer asked you, when did you know that you wanted to be a composer? Or how did you discover that you wanted to be a composer? And you told the story about when you were a little girl falling asleep at night. Do you remember this story? Uh, yes, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but when I, when I was small and I was uh, I was put to bed and I I started to hear music and uh, because it happened always when I was in the bed I I thought it came from the pillow and uh, I asked my mother couldn't you switch off the pillow because I cannot see. <laughs> When you heard, you've heard it in rehearsal here today, um, what what changes once you hear the piece as opposed to having it imagined? And especially with this piece, that it was written for this very special <coughs> place. What changes? Um, well, there are a lot of little adjustments. You know, you imagine the music in your mind, and then you need to find a way to write it on paper. And um, then when people read your music, then there are 
decisions which you may might have made uh, some some things are too loud or or something like that. You you, you could not express exactly what you are looking for. So premiere is always really important to, for everybody, also for me, because I have been imagining the music for a long time. And then finally I hear it physically. So I need to get used to that but in a way it's like, you know, child being born. Just, you know, you imagine you live the nine months with the baby and then when they start, when they come out, they start living their own life. So it's a little bit the same thing. So I need to accept that this is not the piece and, and what else and what else. What, what can I still do? I have a lot of chance and oh, little thing here, you know, this little class changes so that I, I can feel that, okay, Thank you so much, Kaya. It's been, it's been a privilege to have you here and to have the opportunity.